Hello, my name is Tiago and this video is about understanding the time delay caused by digital control strategy and its model in the frequency domain. The motivation behind this video is because several students asked me about what is the effect of representing the time delay during the control strategies design process. So this is the agenda of my presentation. I will start with representing a delayed signal in time domain. Then I will move to the same representation of such a signal but in the frequency domain. Later, I'm going to use the path that approximations to replace E to the power of minus STD. Then I'm going to discuss a little what value to use in the constant TD which represents the time delay. And finally, I'll give you a few, a few final considerations. Starting with representing a delayed signal in the time domain. Let's take this signal as an example. This is a signal, just a pulse, and this signal is described by the function x of t. If the same signal is delayed by the time td, we're going to have this as a result. What we can conclude so far? First, the shape of the signal didn't change. We can see here the, the shape of the signal, the waveform is the same for the original version and also to the delayed version. And now the signal that is delayed is described by the functions x of t minus td. Initially, the signal was x of t, but now the signal is represented by x of t minus td. But again, the shape of the wave, the shape of the signal didn't change. Now moving to representing a delayed signal in the frequency domain, we are going to use the Laplace transforms to make such a transfer from the time domain to the frequency domain. We are going to transfer the signals that I showed you in the previous slide to the frequency domain. If we compute the, the Laplace transform on those signals, we are going to see these two equations as results. We, we see that the original function is just transferred to the frequency domain result in this function here, but when we transfer a delayed signal which has the dd as the length of the duration, we see that in the frequency domain this appears as this function here. What we can conclude with those with these equations? The delay in a signal of duration TD appeared as this term E to the power of minus STD in the frequency domain. As we can be will be observed later, that these terms E to the power of minus STD represents a phase shift in the system. Again, this will be uh, evident in the in a few slides. So, okay, the, the delay in a signal is represented by this block diagram here, the e to the power of minus std. We could initially use this transfer function in the, in the block diagrams of our control system and proceed with designing the controllers, but we don't do that. We opt to use an approximation of PADE to replace such a term. And the question is why to replace this block diagram to a path S approximation? The answer is because this transfer function is irrational, which brings complexity and several difficulties when designing our controllers. So the message at this point is that we have already the representation of a delayed signal in the frequency domain, which is this one, e to the power of minus std but using it exactly as it is in our control strategies may bring complexity because this transfer function is irrational. So the, the solution is to replace such a transfer functions to one of the approximation of PADE. If we take a look first of replacing this to another one, if we take a look first just how is this approximation, the PADEX approximation in, in continuous time domain. Let's take a look first in this approximation in the time domain. This approximation it comes from power series, uh, functions like sine, cosine, the back cell, back cell exponential and other functions can be replaced by the PADEX approximation functions. And the idea of PADE was to represent such a functions as a rational functions of polynomials. So a lot of irrational functions 
resolved later in rational functions and as we are going to see here and in the exponential functions which is our interest we are going to see here the first and the second order approximations let's take a look so the exponential functions again which is irrational can be replaced by the Pade approximation which is this one here I'm, I'm showing you here the first and the second order approximations of Pade to the exponential functions and this will be attractive for us because an irrational function becomes a rational function which is just a fraction a function of polynomials let's first of all plot these functions to check how uh, close are these original functions and the approximation functions this plot here shows that I'm plotting here just the exponential function and also the first and second order approximation functions because we see that there is a region here which is they are really coincident and they start getting distorted after this x value goes high and high and this we're going to see that this sigma is a constant and later this will be our t so by looking at this chart i can conclude that as lower as td is much larger will be the region of coincidence so instead now of using this block diagram to represent the delay in our control process I'm going to replace by one of the Padex approximation, which is the first order. So by looking off those of these two blocks, this is actually irrational, and now I have the representation of the delay in a rational function, which is much easier to do to deal with and also to include in the process of designing controllers. But what happens when we include such a block diagram in the control strategy block? Let's take a look. For checking the effect of including such a delay representation in our control strategy, I'm going to use here just a transfer function, which is the unitary transfer function, and a transfer function which is delayed by the approximation of PADE, the first order. So the result is the unitary transfer functions multiplied by the representation of the time delay. If we plot the bold diagram of these two transfer functions, we're going to see these results here. Let's make write some conclusions of that. If you take a look in the magnitude response, we're going to see that both responses are coincident. This was expected because in time domain the signal didn't change its shape. So I'm expecting that the magnitude response would be coincident again because the waveform, the shape of the signal didn't change because of the delay introduced in the signal. And if you take a look at the phase response, you're going to see that the unitary transfer function gets begins to diverge significantly at high frequencies. So the delay could cause an impact of a phase in your system depending on the frequency that we are under we are using like the sampling frequency again we can conclude also as lower as is td much larger is the region of coincidence so one target is to uh, select to choose a high sampling frequency because the delay effect would be minimal but this shows again a good conclusions when we consider the time delay represented by one of the PADES approximations and another conclusion is that one that I just said if the sampling frequency increases the time delay decreases result in a large region of coincidence and minimal effect of the phase in the whole system so what value to use in the constant TD the TD appeared in those equations that you know, uh, what I showed you in the preview slides. The most common power electronics application is to use the TD equals to 1.5 multiplied by the sampling time. And this 1.5 is actually one plus half of the sampling period, which consists of 0 0.5 is due to the sampling and holding process, as you can see here in this picture. In blue, you can see here the original signal. Here you can see the sample and held 
signal which is sampled here at a sampling frequency just for illustration and we can see that the first harmonic which is actually the signal within the microcontroller is delayed by half because it is crossing exactly here the half in this held signal that has just passed through a sampling and, and hold process so within the microcontroller our first harmonic signal is actually half delayed by its original form of course this is valid for any shape of the signal any sampling frequency due to the process of sampling and holding we are going to face a delay of half compared uh, related to the sampling period so half is because of the sampling and holding uh, processes and one ts one sampling period is is due to the time required to compute the entire control strategy so we usually reserve one sampling period to compute everything that we need to to do that as you can see here this computation of the entire control strategy as a process as a sequential process of steps like sampling holding the variables computing control algorithm update the pwm and also applying the result to the output all of those tasks take some time to be performed so if you properly select the sampling frequency you're going to see that this would occupy one period of the sampling period so as a result we are going to have here 1.5 as a final value applied to the TD during modeling the delay in parallel electronics application so just final considerations of course selecting a high sampling frequency is beneficial because it reduces the adverse effect of delays however a higher sampling frequency also limits the available time for executing the entire control algorithm Besides the fact of requiring more complex and more expensive microcontrollers, so there is also al always a trade-off between sampling frequency, cost, and also time to perform the control algorithm. And then we can see in the literature var several techniques to mitigate the impact of the delay, like multi-sampling strategies and other strategies. And if you can take the material of this video that I wrote, they are available, it is available on my webpage. Feel free to go there and download this material as a PDF describing step by step as a text. You can see also, you can find also other materials there. Thank you for watching this video up so far. If you have any doubts, you can contact me through email. I hope you enjoyed this video.